Welcome to Audio Talk. Hey there, audio enthusiast, and welcome to Audio Talk. My name is Kent. I've been taking、uh, quite a bit of a hiatus from this channel, more than a year. So if you've been following, I really appreciate the patience. And to everyone, welcome, and let's dive into it. Today we're diving into an essential topic of speaker building, which is dampening. Whenever you're a DIY speaker builder or just somebody that wants to improve their audio system, dampening is a key element to get pristine sound. We'll break it down into two main categories: acoustic dampening and mechanical dampening. First up, acoustic dampening. This is all about taming the sound inside of your speaker to prevent the sound waves inside of your speaker to produce unwanted noises, vibrations, sound waves from wreaking havoc inside of the cabinet and wreck your audio quality. For cabinets with a bass reflex port like the tube, also called a ported box, we often turn to. The Ecrate foam. It's a fantastic choice. It has absorption from the foam, and then it has some diffusion of the sound because of its shape. And the dampening here is essential also to limit the amount of sounds coming out through the port, out through the tube. Those are called port resonances, and are definitely not a great addition to your sound. The Ecrate foam. You also seen it quite a bit when it comes to room treatment, which they're also good for. For the ported box, there is several other options that has various types of feedback from people using it. So it's also about like taking a chance on something you've seen on a forum. It could be even something like bubble plast. That has、uh, great feedback from many. Sometimes the firmer, the better, gives a quicker response of these、uh, ported boxes、uh, versus a softer、uh, dampening material. Polyester fill. Now, if you're working with a sealed box, one that does not have the tube in there, like a closed box, polyester fill is your best friend. Not only does it combat the standing waves between parallel surfaces, but it also slows down the airflow inside of the box, and therefore can make the box acoustically seem larger. This slowing down of the airflow inside the box is the same reason that polyester fill is not that great for ported boxes. Because that is what you're trying to do, in order to get the port, the tube, to have that addition to the sound and produce that bass note, that resonance, that also unloads the woofer. And then comes the question: How much? How much should you use? I would recommend, for the best result, to fill the box, and then reduce the amount and. Do listening tests in between. That is by far the most accurate way to get there. So, how do you mount this acoustic dampening material? First, for the ported box, your first priority is the back plate. Secondly, it's top, then bottom, then sides, and you probably would end up with dampening material. On all the sides, it's important that your port, this tube, is not or has a bunch of dampening material around it. The reasoning is that the port works by creating a resonance, like blowing air over a bottle. So it's very, very important that it produces that effect inside of the speaker. So typically, that means at least about an inch or so around it, and also behind it. For the acoustic wall, you don't mount it. 
but when you get it, it's gonna be in a compressed bag. You take it out and then you pull it out so that it's really loose, like cotton candy. And then you put it into the box. If the software you use to uh, calculate the box width has the information of how much dampening there's in the box, of course, follow those directions. But here you will bump into, if it has that, and in general to be aware of, but what you call heavy dampening is filling up the entire cabinet with acoustic wool. Typical is about 50%, which is the most common. And then there's minimal, which is all the way down to like 10, 15%. Um, and where you will typically need a net, you know, uh, if, if you want to attach that uh, in, inside. But again, it's important that it's kind of like a, basically like a cloud that the sound is kind of entering. And as a little comment to the software, you would bump into the option of none. And that will be specifically for subwoofers. If you had taken apart a, a factory made subwoofer, you will have seen that they typically do not have dampening material in there. And the reasoning is that that is such a long uh, sound wave that the acoustic wool or even the egg crate foam or whatever dampening material does not have an effect on those kind of tones. So that's why a subwoofer doesn't need it. It doesn't have any effect over those super, super deep sounds, particularly when you get under 100 hertz. And for both of these boxes, both ported and sealed, but in particular sealed, make them airtight. A lot of people have the reasoning to choose a ported box because it already has a hole in there, but that you still, an air gap is like a whistle in, the, in your speaker. So you really, really wanna make sure that you cut all the sides very, very straight so you can, so that it supports, also supports the sides really well, but you can close the gaps extremely efficiently, even put down a bead of glue or silicone on every. Have it as airtight as if you're creating a fish tank. Acoustic dampening can also be through having unparalleled sides inside your speaker. However, I would still put in the, the additional damping material that we already talked about on top of that. But definitely a good idea to make unparalleled sides. And if you're producing bracing, which we'll get into in a moment about mechanical dampening, perhaps also tilt those slightly here and there to produce unparalleled surfaces. Now let's talk mechanical dampening. This involves eliminating any potential sources of rattling and vibrations inside and outside your cabinet. Here, back to the precision cutting of your box. Have it as straight and precise as you can so you can assemble those sides very, very neatly. And as a material for the box, I highly recommend MDF, medium density fiberboard, because it's very uniform and it has an internal dampening within the product itself. I briefly talked about bracing. This is also a fantastic way of producing extra stability to that cabinet so it won't rattle. And that is pieces of wood across from side to side, or it could be a whole mesh. And lastly, there's a product that has become more and more common everywhere in the car industry in particular, it's called bitumium. And it's a, it's kind of a rubber, lead rubber, that is extremely well at dampening sides. The way you apply it is that you take a surface and then you cover maximum 50% of that surface 
at the middle. The reason why you choose the middle is because that the outside where the seams are, where you have glued the other side on, the box is not going to be rattling very much. It's, those two plates are stabilizing each other. So the middle of the plate is where the biggest problem is and where you will place this material. Something extremely important also is to secure everything inside of the box, meaning wiring, crossover, it is surprising how much vibrations from different products can come out through a port, even through the material of the membrane, like the woofer in a closed box. Of course, this is more prevalent for the ported box to have this problem. Let me give you an example. A PCB, a circuit board, um, which is kind of a hard material, if you have one corner of that being able to vibrate, it will, and it can be super loud, and it can sound like something is broken inside one of the speaker drivers. So fasten everything, wiring, make sure it's either fastened or it sits on outside the dampening material so it doesn't clad against the sides, because that's another one that is extremely common to get some kind of like, at a certain frequency, you'll just hear that and it sounds like something is broken, but all it is is a piece of wire. Remember, a solid, well-dampened speaker cabinet is the foundation of good sound. Combine these mechanical and acoustical dampening techniques and you'll be well on your way to audio perfection. If you found this information valuable, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more audio related tips and tutorials. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Thank you for tuning in and until next time, enjoy the music. Bye.